Okay, thank you for the introduction. This is joint work with Ali Reza Tabal Saleh and Xavier Vives. And I feel that I should start with a disclaimer. This talk is not going to be about cryptocurrency or blockchains. So what this talk is about, prices convey information. This idea is attributed to the economist Friedrich Hayek, which introduced the informational role of prices in his work from 1945 called The Use of Knowledge in Society. Now what Hayek claimed is that by observing the price, agents can make decisions as if they knew all the available information in the market. And this is captured by the notion of price informativeness, meaning the ability of prices to aggregate dispersed information that is held privately by different market participants. So to put this into context, a natural example nowadays is financial markets. So prices in financial markets reflect information that different traders have about the value of the asset that is being traded. So if, for example, a less informed agent as myself wants to buy some financial asset, I look at the prices and I make a decision with respect to the information that I get from the price. So it's not just whether I can afford the asset or not, but what do I think this value will be in the future according to the price now. And this is also why regulators find price informativeness to be an important issue since it affects the allocation of the capital. Another recent example is emissions trading. So in a sense, this is also some type of a financial market. Briefly, um, in an attempt to reduce pollution around the world, different countries are now implementing these cap and trade systems. So the idea is to set a cap on pollution for a, for a certain amount of time. And then the government distribute allowances to pollute for potential emitters. So this can be done either by auctioning or just giving away the allowances. Then a secondary market emerges where firms can trade these allowances between themselves. So if one firm has some unused allowances, it can sell it in the secondary market to a different firm who has excess emissions and at the end of the compliance period has to show the government that they have the same amount of allowances as their pollution. Now the idea of this market is to put a price on pollution, but also to reflect the cost of the firm, the abatement cost. So each firm has its abatement cost, which is private information, and we want the price to be able to reflect that private information and also take into account the price of pollution. So we want the firms to internalize this impact of their production. Now just for example, some studies about the EU emissions trading, which is the first and so far the largest uh, system in the world of this type, shows that in the implementation uh, period and also in the first compliance period, prices fail to aggregate information efficiently. And what is important about it is that it means that there is an inefficient reduction of emissions. So what we're interested in is how does price informativeness affect the efficiency of the market? So first we want to see, can the price actually reflect all the dispersed information? And if not, what does it mean for market efficiency? Now, what is new about this work compared to existing literature is that we introduce heterogeneity in agents' preferences and in the quality of their information, meaning their precision. So we want to use the most simple model that captures the key features from these real-life examples. So we want to have heterogeneous agents with asymmetric information. We look at a generalized Cornell competition, meaning that the firms submit price contingent uh, demand functions. And we allow for the price to aggregate the information and for the agents to learn this information from prices. So we'll see exactly how this is done. Now because I have only 18 minutes, I'm going to begin with the ending. First we'll show that agents preference heterogeneity which in the paper is induced by different trading costs, reduces price informativeness, meaning that when we have heterogeneous agents, prices fail to aggregate information completely. 
In addition, not only do prices fail to aggregate information, but also there is an informational externality. So when we have heterogeneity, the agents fail to internalize how their decisions, how their trading decisions, affect the information that other traders convey from prices. Now, what is surprising is that usually it is assumed that the more informative the price, the better is uh, the market is more efficient and the higher the welfare. But what we show is that actually in some cases, when we have heterogeneous agents, we would actually want the price to be less informative in order to increase welfare. And one of the applications is about market design. So we show that policies that shape the distribution of the agents participating in the market, mainly policies about market architecture, can have first order effects of welfare. And all of this to say that price informativeness should be an important policy concern for market design. So let me skip the related literature because of time and go straight to the model. So we have n competitive agents and one single divisible good. We have a simple quadratic payoff function with the valuation of the good given by theta i. Xi is the amount that is being bought. We have the trading cost where we introduce the first dimension of heterogeneity. So these trading costs lambda i can be potentially different among different traders. And we have the market price P. And we assume that these trading costs are common knowledge. But this is more for simplicity, and the results will still hold even if we just assume that the distribution of lambdas is known. So agents have interdependent valuation of the good that is being traded. And we assume it's normally distribu distributed with mean 0 and variance 1. And there is correlation between different traders' valuations. So we assume there is a fixed correlation for all pairs of agents, rho. And it captures the model of private values when rho goes to 0, and also a common value as rho goes to 1. Now, although agents don't know the exact valuation, they have some private information about the value of the good, which is given in the form of these private signals si, which is theta i plus some normally distributed noise. And here we introduce the second dimension of heterogeneity. So the accuracy, the variance of the noise term can be potentially different between different traders. Now what's important to understand is as long as rho is different from zero, I care about someone else's private information. In addition to the end traders, we have one representative outside agent who also has a quadratic utility, but he doesn't have any uncertainty. So in a financial market, you can think about them as a long-term investor, where um, his valuation is not determined by uh, short-term fluctuations, and the other end traders can be some speculators. In the emissions trading, you can think about it as the government giving the allowances. So by Having market clearing, the outside agent induces this linear price form, which is linear in the aggregate demand. So the timeline is, is as follows. We first have the valuations drawn. Agents don't know their valuations. They have some private information. They submit their demand or supply functions. Then the market clears, and the payoffs are realized. Now, to allow for traders to learn from prices, we use this concept of a rational expectation equilibrium. So basically what it means, as usual, all agents maximize their utility. But here they condition on their information set. So for the end traders, it's the price and the private information. And for the outside representative agent, it's just the price. So we assume that agents know how the price looks like as a form of all private information. And this is the idea of this rational expectation equilibrium. And of course, the market clears. 
So as the basis for their whole analysis, we characterize an equilibrium of the market in linear strategies. So agents put some weight AI on their private information. So agents put some weight a SI, sorry, AI on their private information and some weight minus SI on the public information, the price, and perhaps some intercept BI. And the price equilibrium is this weighted average of the private information with the weight determined by the weights AI that agents put on their private information. So one thing just to say that the weights AI depend on the model parameters, the trading cost, the correlation, and the private information accuracy, whereas the weight that people put on the price also depends on the parameter from the outside agent beta. So there are two observations that are immediate from this equilibrium characterization. The first is regarding the weight that private information has in the price. So the weight that I, as an agent, put on my private information depends on my trading cost. So you can think intuitively, if I have a low trading cost, I will trade more aggressively, and the price will be biased towards my private information. And this is exactly what's happening here. So we see that agents with lower trading costs will have, their price will be biased towards their information. The second observation is about the slope of the demand curve, the CIs. So on the one hand, the price reflects your opportunity cost. So as the price is higher, your opportunity cost is higher, and you may want to buy less. On the other hand, we said the price also gives you information. So then if the price increases, that actually signals you something good about the value, and you would want to buy more. And this slope CI represent these two forces, which work in opposite direction. What determines which one is stronger is this parameter beta coming from the outside agent, which is how sensitive is the price to the aggregate demand. So it's easy to see from this equation is that when beta is very small, price is not sensitive to the aggregate demand. And any increase in the price reflects good news about the value, so I want to buy more, and that induces agents to use upward sloping demand curve. On the other hand, if beta is very high, price is very sensitive to demand, and any small good signal will result in a large fluctuation, and that induces agents to use downward sloping demand curves. Basically, these two observations will help us understand all the next results. So we start with the first question, can the price really reflect all dispersed information? And we take this Hayekian spirit, which means that the price will be fully privately revealing if by observing the price and my private information, I can make a decision as if I knew all the information available. Mathematically, that means that the price is a sufficient statistic for all the information. <clears throat> So our first result is that the equilibrium will be fully privately revealing if and only if all trading costs are the same. And this is intuitive because we saw that the price was a weighted average. And the trading cost doesn't have anything to do necessarily with the quality of information. Now, it's not that there doesn't exist a sufficient statistic for the information, but rather it's the equilibrium response of agents that makes it inefficient. So with heterogeneous agents, prices don't aggregate information completely. So what about our second question? What does it mean about the real efficiency of the market or the allocative efficiency? As a benchmark, we use this team efficient problem. We want to maximize total welfare, but we are still limited to this decentralized information structure. So still, each agent can only look at his own private information and on the price. And again, we have the result that the price will be, the equilibrium will be constrained efficient if and only if all identical all trading costs are identical. So when we introduce heterogeneity, 
not only does it lead to incomplete information aggregation, but also to constrained inefficiency. Now, the fact that the equilibrium will be efficient if agents would have had perfect information or if they didn't care about other agents' information means that this is a result of an informational externality. So as I mentioned before, agents don't internalize how their decisions affect the information that other agents uh, infer from the price. I think I don't have much time. Yeah. All right. OK. So let me just skip to this application on market design. So we saw that when we have heterogeneous agents, the market will be informationally inefficient and also allocatively inefficient. But is there something that we can do? So we want to compare between a centralized market and a segmented one. In the centralized market, all agents can trade with one another. In the segmented market, only agents within that market can trade with one another. And so for each segment, there is a different price. Now, when the market is informationally efficient, we show that indeed the centralized market will always has at least as good uh, as a welfare. And it makes sense. There are more opportunities for trade. And even informationally, there's more information to be aggregated. However, what happens if the market is not informationally efficient? Then we show that depending on the distribution of the agents in each of the segments, segmentation can actually lead to a welfare improve to a first order welfare improvement. So why this is relevant, I talked about these new markets on emissions trading, where there is a lot of discussion whether they should do a centralized market to all emitters or a segmented one per sizes of the firms or different industries. So this analysis may contribute to the decisions that they make, whether they want to do a segmented market or not. So just to summarize, when we introduce heterogeneity and preferences, not the, necessarily the information quality, we have uninformative prices, which leads to an informational externality. And we have we've shown how market design can impact uh, and change the welfare with respect to the heterogeneity uh, in each of these markets. So thank you. <laughs>